It's Friday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Obia Jelu. Hi. How you doing? Amazing. Thank God it's Friday. Yay! I always look forward to Saturday mornings because I will not wake up early. <laughs> <laughs> I like to state it like that. So I put off my phone. I wake up about these days, uh, not so... Not so late. Yeah, not so late. Yeah. Maybe 9 a.m. Yeah. It's to 9, I'm awake. And um, I just had a lovely breakfast this morning. Oh, yeah. yeah the chef was... Wake up, was really up, yeah. generous today. brought it to Mariah, but <laughs> she's dieting, so she had to pass the food down to me. Really lovely. Okay. Yeah. Potato portage <laughs> and... Uh, so I think sweet and Irish potato portage yeah, really nice. nice. So I'm looking forward to the weekend, basically. Yeah. I have activities planned for the weekend. We're going to the Happiness Centre today? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Fantastic. How are you doing? I love your hair. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How are you doing? I channeled Ina Mariah to rejig the wig. To yeah, make that work, um, I'm grateful to God. Um, I'm, my weekends now are site inspection weekends, so it's not something like it's like a busy, 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 busy all through. And I don't have a choice because people need to see what they want to buy, and they are only most most people are freer to go to the site on, mm. on Saturday. So like I'm looking for I'm looking to tomorrow and wondering, oh, we're going to Ekpo again, but mm. yeah, we gotta say <laughs> it's the journey. Yes, sir. How are you doing, Mariam? I'm good. I'm excited. I hope it comes across that no. way. No, no, no. no. I'm tired. But <laughs> yeah, you look tired. Yeah, um, I slept really late last night. Um, but then I have to talk about so, Earth Hour is um, the world's largest grassroots movement for our environment. So, Nigerian Conservation Foundation and um, WWF would be. Um, marking this um, Earth Hour on Saturday. So it will take like one hour where we turn off all like, electricity or anything ah. that emits carbon. And we're asking everyone across the world to join us for this. At NCF, it will be about 8 p.m. We'll be there. Just not, don't turn on your generators. If there, there's hardly ever light, so that works for most of us in this part <laughs> of the world. But don't turn on, use candlelight, use your touch light. For just hour. for an hour, just to say, you know, we're in this together, saving the planet, saving our environment. We're all in this together. We understand um, world leaders make their contributions, but unless individuals, every one mm. of us in our different places, mm. our small communities take charge, we will not see a major difference. So, yes. Nice. Earth hour. Oh, hour. Earth we hour. used to have uh, no lights now for hours. Yeah. <laughs> so use candle, don't turn on your gen. Can just oh, dangerous. Use, uh, See, so oh, flash flashlight. Yes, yeah. so use a flashlight. Okay, mm. cool. Right. Well, what are you doing? Weekend. Yeah, today is Friday. Um, actually, I'm so happy all my meetings got cancelled today, so I'm so excited. <laughs> so, oh, man, I was like, thank you, Jesus. We so, I might just um, just do something interesting to myself. My kids, they, like, the, she, my daughter finally agrees that she needs a tracksuit. Uh -huh. So I, I have to go and look for something. I'll probably go to Surulay to find something. Mm. I don't know. I'll, I'll send you my son's size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was even going to think you're going to send me the person that you bought your son's home from. I'm not yeah, so <laughs> anyway, I'll just do a few runs here. I'm yeah. trying to pamper myself a bit. Mm. I'm, I'm excited about this evening. I'll go yes. there. Yes, happiness the center. Happiness, happiness center. center. I'll be there That's tonight. Like 5 yeah. p.m. Right? And tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And tomorrow evening to the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Sunday. Evening. It's a three-day event. We're going to do some yoga moves. Yeah, okay. And some stretching I hope I can. and some uh, meditation. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward. To yes. Ah, all right. <laughs> Okay, guys, let's go on a quick break. When we return, we go through the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Convention, why we chose consensus options by APC. $3.27 billion crude oil stolen in 14 months. Mm -hmm. Over 9.7 million people at risk of being regains freedom, passport seized. Ibrahim ordered to publish court records against Amcon MD. Reps, Section 18, Subsection 12 remains part of Electoral Act. Raised for PDP kit ticket and a dangerous precedent. It's, a, I think it's an editorial. Okay, and why police may pay rise is delayed by IG. Okay. Okay, so um, huh. $3.27 billion crude oil stolen in 14 months. You know, the first time I heard about this was when we read, when Tony Lumilu was talking about the theft and the vandalism that's going on in the upstream sector of the oil and gas industry. And so um, 
um, stakeholders came together and they were talking about it and, you know, taking data and the data has shown that it is a huge amount of vandalism and theft that's happening to the point that is going to affect us, um, you know, as they say here, it would affect Nigeria's corporate and economic existence if something is not done about it. And so um, the government is saying and the regulatory body that this, they'll start criminalizing it and the days, the days of these thieves are numbered mm. because it takes a lot, for those who are in that industry, it takes so much to, you know, get this crude oil and then you have it just taken away and stolen. And this is, is done in such a huge amount that even our, ec our economic existence is threatened completely. And um, I'm just happy that, you know, that they, have, they are shining a spotlight on this issue and let Nigerians know. Because, you know, many times we blame government, we blame everyone else, but this is the, an example of we the people why are we doing this? Exactly. And then also there has to be system put in place to, um, to disallow and pro protect, you know, uh, resources mm. from thefts like this. All right, let me start with the major headline. So the Natara State Governor, who is actually the spokesperson for the, um, for the National Convention of the APC happening tomorrow, he has said that they've all agreed to align with the President Muhammad Buhari's consensus candidate, which is Adamu, and he's insisting that they have to do this so that the convention can be hitch-free. All road is leading to Abuja. Every, every key APC members are all in Abuja right now preparing for tomorrow's convention. And they also said very importantly that they will be adhering to the Electoral Act. That's this, this controversial section 84, subsection 12, that is saying that you have to resign. Say that if you are in office right now, you cannot participate in this um, primaries that's going to happen. And that... Um, they said that all the ex-senators are conversing hitch free convention. And that Damu, who is the preferred candidate, is saying, don't be scared of me. I, I am I'm going to definitely put everybody's um, interest uh, at, at the fore. So we'll see how that goes tomorrow. I just hope they have a very peaceful and they have, hope there's no violence tomorrow because mm. everybody is in Abuja right now. Yeah. Okay. So the United Nations Children Fund, uh, UNICEF, said yesterday that 9.7 million Nigerian pupils are at risk of not returning to school. The figure was... 10.5 pupils who were not in school just before COVID-19, but now about 9.7 may not return to school. So they said it yesterday, um, according to the executive director, Catherine Russell, they were trying to launch a Nigeria learning platform, which is going to be online and offline at the same time. And this learning platform will allow children in nursery, primary and secondary school have access to digital curriculum and learning material. So wherever you are in the part of uh, the country, you'll be able to you know, use this learning material, whether you're in school or not in school. And uh, they're saying that uh, Nigeria is one of the 20 power countries that has adopted this learning platform and is a way to rejig our educational system so that we don't have so many children out of school. And even if you're not where you can have access to the classroom, you can use this and not have a gap, a learning gap. Okay. Some take the police officers. Many um, police officers were expecting that um, the president's um, salary increments that had been instructed, given, would take effect. But the deputy inspector general of police, DIG John Kukumo, representing the inspector general of police, IGP um, Alkali Baba Husman, was speaking in Oshun and said that there will be delay and that it shouldn't lead to mutiny. Some people are threatening they would go on strike, the police would go on strike if they don't do the payment. And he said there will be many ministries, there are many ministries involved, the, the finance, Ministry of Finance, Police Affairs Ministry, Salary and Wages Department, and there will be a lot of computing. Mm. That they'll be computing the 20% increase. That can you imagine just computing 20% increase for all the police officers in Osho State alone? How mm. long it would take? Wow. Talk of the entire nation mm. that this would take a while, but that we should be patient. The president has given the order, the IGP has already gone around states to assure all police officers that the 20% increase will be implemented. It might just not be immediate and it might cause a bit of delay in the wages of our security officials that they should not commit crime because of the patients that many police officers have served this country so far selflessly, sacrificially. They should not use this last minute um, delay to um, turn over the good right. work they've done for so long. Okay. We want to appeal to our police officers to please be patient. All right. Let's move quickly to the punch. APC convention at Buhari battles last minute crisis, summons governors and chairmanship aspirants fail to agree. Suspected cultist invited gang member to rape 22 year old Lover, says police, mm -hmm. done talking with um, foreign partners on Southwest Rail Linkage, says Director General. 
IG distributes 256 trucks, APC, other vehicles, uniforms to formations. Oyo NURTW threatens bloodshed, alleges attacks by park managers. Fashola restates second Niger Bridge 2022 completion date, blames IPOB. Miami's aide resigns, teams up with ex-governor Oni in SDP. 12,977 children among over 200,000 tuberculosis cases recorded in 2021, says federal government. IOC's fear collapse as FFG says 1.36 trillion are accrued in a 14 months. Okay, which story are we taking? We'll take the human, human interest, interest story. Yes, please. Yes, so uh, police um, in Ogun State have arrested two suspected cultists for allegedly gang raping a 22-year-old lady, oh Nabiokuta. So according to her story, um, the, she's in a relationship with a 38-year-old man, Shinwu Orokunle, and on this particular day, she visited this man in his house, and um, unknown to her, the man had invited his friend over. So she was in, taking her bath in the bathroom when this friend came in, dragged her out, and two of them raped her. Oh. They were done with her. They beat her up, raped her when they were done. The, the boyfriend soaked her clothes in water so that she doesn't leave immediately. Uh, finally, she was able to get out of the place, and she reported the matter to the police. So they have been picked up, and investigations are ongoing. Really sad. So Inspector General of Police, hmm, we're loving him. out. I'm loving him. The Inspector General, the new Inspector General of Police, Usman Baba, has ordered the immediate distribution of additional batches of uniforms, kits, um, accoutrements, and body armors to police inspectors and other ranks. I mean, he, part of this was also the allocation of 253 newly procured operational and emergency vehicles to the police formations across zonal states and commands. And this was made said by, um, by the spokesperson, Mr. Muy, uh, Muywa, CSP Muywa. And, job. and also they said that he had assured all the administration commit his commitment to sustaining the regular issuance of uniforms to police personnel, as well as his readiness to continually provide the needful and upgrade needed for the police. So I'm happy about this because I said this was exactly what happened with hashtag NSAS, with the wealth of the police, the giving them the right equipment, the um, total the, the, overhaul. The, the, the overhaul of the police. So we've seen bits of it here and there, and we'll continue to monitor their progress. Yes, Mariam, want to take a start? Yes, so... Um uh, it was World Tuberculosis Day on Thursday, and um, you know we it's celebrated to bring awareness about this disease and how it affects us. And the Minister for Health just reported that um, no fewer than 207,000 cases of tuberculosis in 2021 was recorded, and out of that number, 12,977 cases were affected children. children. And, you know, he has said that um, in our country right now, out of the 36 states, only 28 states have centers that manage um, drug-resistant tuberculosis. So we need to do a lot more. He talked about how um, we're doing a lot better when it comes to the HIV tuberculosis because uh, people with HIV also tend to experience um, tuberculosis and they've worked so well that they're seeing better numbers and people are getting better. But when it comes to the children's cases, there are gaps, and so they have to work better concerning that area. We need to do better with our children. Okay, so I wanted to take the Oyo State story. There's um, been a major issue between the NURW, um, <clears throat> the National Union of Road Transport Workers in Oyo State, and a department called PAC management system. So oh. I know that a, a few um, months, ago. months ago, the, or, or your governor had said that the um, NURCW is not allowed within the state, but the lawyer of the NURCW is saying that they haven't been prescribed the cases in court, and the NURCW is threatening bloodshed if the PAC management, P, PAC management system, PMS, does not allow them to collect the funds they usually collect. Also mentioned that the NUSW members are not allowed to visit their office. Mm, mm. So what they're saying is um, PAC management system is har harassing us and threatening us, and we are going to fight back. Now, I know the reason NUSW um, activities in your State was stalled was to right. forestall crisis and i believe that the governor should quickly step in mm. to prevent mm. for the crisis um, major crisis from happening i was going to quickly before you're going to break so partial the minister of works and housing was saying that the second niger bridge completion was delayed now Punch said, first last we said, second Niger Bridge 2022 completion date blames ipop that's very mm, misleading good. Mm. extremely I, misleading I because i read the article you took that story yeah. what he said actually 
was that the second Niger built, uh, failed the, the delay, they didn't need the February deadline because of the several factors such as COVID-19 lockdown, yeah. mm -hmm. hashtag NSAS protest and the sit of orders by iPhone. Three things. Yes. But they picked out one. Says blames iPhone. And that oh. can actually aggravate anybody yes. that just says the major headline. We need to be careful. So just like, mm. Is this really wrong? That's bad journalism. Thank you for calling them out. Let's go on a break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, thanks for staying with us. We're going to continue with Daily Sun. APC chair, support swells for consensus. Zoning, PDP gives clue to expectation from panel. LG workers, I think that's local government workers in Enugu to receive minimum wage soon. Pledges Nwai. Mascot Kalu under pressure to dump APC. Ex Anambra Governor Peter Obi joins presidential race. Among amid the uh, traditional rulers' endorsement. Second Niger Bridge attains 91% completion since federal government. 2023 presidency. Southeast women hold 1 million march for Yahaya Bello in Abia. Sylvia Irabo, Komolafe, read riot act to oil thieves. Okay, which story are we starting with? Uh, okay. Um, has assured local government workers that they will soon join their counterparts in the core ministries to enjoy the 30,000 uh, naira minimum wage. And this came as a result of the threat that was given by the Nigerian Union of Local Government Employees who, uh, that said that um, they can only support any political part party that prioritizes actualization of local government autonomy in the 2023 election. So I think everybody's just trying to sit up here. And uh, the governor says that they have started, you know, following the modalities to ensure that these local government workers earn their 30,000 naira minimum wage and they're speeding it up. However, they started paying this minimum wage from uh, 2020. February 2020, but it was just focused on the core ministry. So now they are bringing it down, and the local government uh, workers should be patient. However, the national president of um, NULGE is saying that um, the government so far has abused and emasculated local government system to the extent that it now looks like local councils were no more a third tier of government. And he also says the issue of the minimum wage should not be subjected to any further debate. They just want to collect, begin to collect and enjoy this money. And because of the fact that the government is not in line with the grassroots leadership in terms of local government reaching out to people, we are having a lot of agitations in the state and this needs to stop. Mm. Okay. Let me just give like a continuation to the Niger, um, second Niger bridge. Right. So some of the other things that the Minister for Works and Housing said was that um, uh, first of all, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway and the Second Niger Bridge are on course to be completed this year, this 2022. Mm -hmm. And um, while the main carriageway of the Abuja Kaduna Zaria Kano Expressway is scheduled to be completed by second quarter 2023. And then he also gave some advice. He said that um, once these roads are done, people should be careful and not uh, fall into the temptation to exceed 100 km per hour on this road, you know, to avoid accidents and crashes. He also said people who tend to sell PMS, petrol, on this, um, on this road, that it, <clears throat> it degrades the road. So we have to take that business off the roads. We'll and he okay. also he also said, OK, so the part where he said the reasons why um, it has been delayed, the second Niger Bridge has been delayed, mm. as you mentioned, all the three things that he mentioned. And then finally, he said that um, the people of Anambra State may have to experience power shortage for um, outage for a short while because a uh, grid will be taken down for maintenance and they will go, they're going to use the opportunity to put up transmission lines. Mm. So it's just for a short time to do that and then right. things will go back to Okay, usual. so those who are saying Southeast presidential, uh, presidential, that we don't have a Southeastern presidential candidate. Well, another one has expressed his um, intention. That's yes. former governor of uh, Anambra State, Peter Obi. He had a meeting yesterday where he was talking with, um, uh, amongst some other traditional rulers where he was declaring his intention. He says that I called you to, to first thank you all for your support and friendship. I want to inform you that I'm aspiring to be president of Nigeria 2023. According <coughs> to him, what Nigeria needs is someone with capacity mm. that can manage it 
and manage it well. We need to move our economy from consumption to production. That's what I'm here for. And Nigeria, you are going to ensure that there will be transparency in Nigeria going forward. So I'm happy for him. So that I'm happy for him. He's quite credible. Yes. And the people enjoyed him while he was there. He was very down to earth. He yes. would join the buses with them. He just, you know, the way uh, Fashala worked. Mm. He connected. Yes, he was yes. with the people. Yeah. So congratulations to you. And I just pray that um, may the best well, man win at the end of the day. Okay, let's move on quickly now to Vanguard. The Spanish store we've not taken $3.27 billion crude loss to thieves in 14 months. To that story already. Chidima prison controller Ekwendu redeployed over beauty pageant. APC convention, how Adamu emerged consensus candidate. Um, state of the nation, we all cause Nigeria's war, says Tinumbu. 47,000, um, terrorists surrendered to troops. Famiche, we are in talks with leading pathologist, says lawyer. EFCC releases Obiano one week after arrest seizes passport. 2023, Peter Obi receives royal blessing as he declares for president. And strikes worsen varsity education pro-chancellor tells FG, says Asu. Okay. So let me take the EFCC story quickly. Obi, um, former governor, um, Willie Obiano, immediately after handing over, came to Lagos and was about to jet out of the country and he was arrested a week ago. Exactly one week after the EFCC had released him, the allegations for his arrest was um, misappropriation of public funds, including 5 billion Naira Shopee funds, 37 billion Naira security votes, which was withdrawn in cash. The allegation was the money was used allegedly to finance political activities within the state. That's from the head of media and publicity of EFCC. Now he's been released. The part of the bail conditions for his release included that he should drop his international passport. Um, we've had a lot of media trial. We're really hoping that EFCC would carefully track how this 43 billion, 42 billion was spent and justice be served. If somebody is okay. guilty, you should serve his time. Yeah, so the conference of pro-chancellors of state-owned universities in Nigeria, Copson, Yesterday, they had a conference and they lamented the incessant industrial action by ASU, saying that this is an impediment to improving quality education in the country's higher institution. Uh, they said um, this happened, the conference happened in Oshobo, and according to uh, Malam Yusuf Ali in their communique, which I want to quote quickly, says the current strike by the Academic Staff Union of Universities and the consequences for the prospects of the already traumatized institutions of higher learning in the country. The Committee of Pro-Chancellors of State-Owned Universities, Copson, restates its long-standing position that strikes cannot be a solution to industrial problems. It is observed that it's high time as to sort alternative ways of venting grievances and demonstrating that lecturers were equal stakeholders in the Nigerian project. So they went ahead to say that Hobson and Asu are in this together. However, they just use different strategies to get the same things. But that the government needs to reassure Asu that they are part of the system and carry them along in whatever it is that they are doing. They also complained about um, the fact that we have so many states, um, so many private universities which needs to be regulated because they are not really seeing the impact. They have over 91 already and it's not like we're seeing the impact. They also mentioned about state universities saying that states are now using it as a constituency project. So my state, my local government must have a university. Meanwhile, the ones they have already, they are not properly found, funded. So we need to look into all of this. Okay, I was going to just take the, just a side comment that the lady, um, the, contro the controller, Mrs. Ekwendu, the controller of the Kirikiri female prison has been redeployed to Alagbo in Ikoyi, and that's people are suspected it's because of what happened with the beauty pageant that happened, oh. and where that, that, that followed a lot of um, social media, criticisms of why would they allow such a pageant within the uh, premises of the prisons, but she has been redeployed. That's, that's the only story. There's nothing else on that story. Okay, we have to wrap up very shortly. Let me see. We don't have any more. Um, Nigerian Tribune, is there any important story we've missed out? Uh, oh, PDP. I was going to take what PDP, because I'm really interested in this their zoning matter, what is going on, what they finally <laughs> decided. But is there any story in Tribune, APC convention of... I have uh, six um, people who were abducted, kidnapped. Let's take that story quickly. Yes, Sorry. so... Uh, they said six persons, including some members of the NYSC, on their way from they were um, on their way from Boko, and they were kidnapped around Ochadamu community uh, in Ogun State by government. So, according to the driver's story, he said he just saw a lot of government all of a sudden, and then he knew that if he had started running, they would shoot and probably destroy mm -hmm. the vehicle. So he parked 
and then they came in, they asked all of them to get out of the car, uh, they were by the bush, and they took six, I think there were 13 passengers in the bus, they took six of them, and now they are requesting six million. So amongst them was a pregnant woman, one an orphan child. That one, they are beginning to negotiate with the kidnappers. And that orphan child, the people taking care of him, says it's only 80,000 naira that they can, you know, Imagine. offer. And uh, immediately that happened, the driver drove to a certain point and saw some naval officers, reported the matter to them. Those ones went into the bush to check for the kidnappers. They didn't find them. And then he went the next day to the police to report. They said he should get away from there. So these people are now liaising with the kidnappers mm. themselves mm. to negotiate. Yes, a mm. copper is among them. Yeah. Okay, we have to wrap up, but I guess this story of PDP is, is just the fact that they set up a 37-man committee on this zoning <laughs> matter. Committee so remember, they're, they're, they're still oh, having this issue we of should we zone mm. or should we focus on who can win? So that, 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 that is can the bring the that they have home. a culture, they, 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 they have a reputation of zoning in their party and they are employing others to align with the zoning. So if zoning means that we have to find a southern candidate, but the others are saying, candidate. say southeast, well, it's just a southern, <laughs> it's a southeast, just a southern candidate, that's that what they said. Okay. But they're saying that that might not be beneficial to them when it comes the to the party, Asian party mm. because for them it's like, for zoning is so not party's too, interest first. For zoning for them is not paramount now at this time because mm. they want wow. to beat a, a ruling party who mm. has the capacity to win. Mm. And if you're doing that zoning, zoning might not it be what not they need. According according to to get them, them the cup. So they are saying that they don't think Nigeria mm, Maybe. Well, yeah. You know, so it's interesting. Possible. Let's see how all it plays the political out. dynamics playing out. We'll see how it plays out. You know, let's go on a break. It's Friday. When we come back, we move on to our next topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us today. We'll be discussing unconditional love. They are billboards on social media platforms. Everybody's talking about the aim is to demonstrate that love of a mother and child. So we'll be seeing this hashtag, unconditional love, across the board. And we just thought it was important for us to talk about unconditional love, especially because Mother's Day is around the corner. So what does unconditional love to me, what does unconditional love mean to you, Tokwe? Okay, so um, for me, unconditional um, Unconditional love is, 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 is this strong bond that you can't explain. So, and, and I think that Mother's Day being around the corner just reminds you because um, the moment I had my kids, the moment like I went through that delivery, I looked at my mom differently because I understood what I went through and I'm like, wow, this is... So I, my love transcended to another level for my mom and now I have these two boys that... They can do no wrong. Okay, even when they do wrong, I still love them. Like, you know when they, we have this comed, comedy that monkey don't find my mama like him. Yeah. It's unconditional love. Like, you know your child is going through stuff. You are, you are tired, but you still love that child. And um, the bond between a mother and a child is the best way to describe unconditional love. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, it, this reminds me of when we were in secondary school and I said, what is love? Love is a feeling you feel when you feel a feeling you've never felt before. Ah, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> so. so for me, unconditional love is love without limits. You know, love without, con of course, conditions. But just without limit. And when it comes to mother and child, it's like, I, I don't even know how people would categorize that love because it's just that's you that is what you are that's the essence that is you are the unconditional love they are the unconditional love you know that is what you're in and um like you said Tope, when i had my first child too i felt so differently about my mother just this new respect, respect. and just understanding i mean you could have made that choice of not having going through this <laughs> but you decided to go yeah. through this and after all this experience, you still would make so many sacrifices for me. See, my very first example of unconditional love is my mom. My mom has made so many sacrifices mm. for her children. Mm. And, you know, you know to, today when we talk about all the things that women can do, oh, think about yourself, do this for yourself. My mom never thought about herself first. She always thought of us first. 
many decisions, many things that she gave up. She gave up because of us. And I know that the, uh, these days we talk about how women should do it differently. But I'm grateful that she made those sacrifices for me and for my younger ones. So, that's, yes. that's interesting. <laughs> See, that statement you made is a whole day's topic. <laughs> because a lot of young people are not willing to make that kind of sacrifices yeah, today. Anybody and you think about it in future. And saying, how do, so, that, and you think to yourself, okay, how do I weigh this? Mm -hmm. I need to be more happy for myself. You know, coaches to tell you, think of you, yourself. You can't give from no, an empty you can't, cup. You can't give from an empty cup. No, you can't give an empty cup. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, mm -hmm. but I'm sacrificing this thing because mm -hmm. of this yeah. This, this result, yes. you know? So there's so many factors, but, you know, it's a different day. So what is unconditional love to you, madam? Well, the benefit of Mother's Day coming up, I wouldn't beg to differ on this matter. <laughs> Let oh, me but just, you, can, you, can, you can actually... Let's just the, stick, because I have seen... Have I have seen... Um, so I know generally, even mm. the scripture says, can a mother abandon her suckling child? Mm. So the general is that that love, that unconditional love, is there naturally, just the same way God loves us unconditionally, and that's what a mother feels for somebody, another human being who has passed through her. Is there's just this attachment you cannot explain. Yeah. But we have also seen some cases, yeah. which is let me say like the one percent of people who naturally don't have that connect. That unconditional love is not there. We yeah. have those yeah. aside. But for me, unconditional love is love in spite of, not because of. Uh, the difference we see now is people are beginning to love even their own children because of what they think they can get, uh, the yeah. situations around them, uh, what, the, yes, what the society, the status. Uh, if you know, if you don't have children, they look at you like you're a barren woman. So let me just have them, you know, just pop them out without even making plans on how to take care of them because of. But the true love we're talking about today is for those women who have sacrificed in spite of. They have, there's this um, woman around me who has given so much for her children. And there's this particular child that keeps bringing her pain. And the last time we had a conversation, she said, he's my child. Can I abandon him? I will love him. Even if I have to follow him to you know, prison, take him to rehab, I have to do everything within my power because he's my seed. Mm. I cannot. That's the sort of unconditional love that we're talking about today. And that's what we are celebrating. And as young mothers, we are beginning to understand. I was looking at my children one day and I was thinking in my head, is there <laughs> anything these beautiful angels will do to me tomorrow <laughs> that will make me say I can't love them? Mm. I don't think so mm. because they are from me. Mm. There's no, it's like me saying I will no longer love myself. And also, there's this part of, you know, when you talked about life coaches, we say you cannot give from an empty cup. Some people feel like their parents haven't given them enough because those parents were working, they were running on empty. Mm. They, they, they did the best they could do with the abilities and the resources that they had. So they couldn't give you more. You were expecting more because you are, you are full of love. You are a love child. It's like you are a 10-gallon pint of love. And this parent has just two pints. Mm. She will do or he will do the best that he mm. or she can with what's available to her. So in talking about unconditional love, we also need to talk about forgiveness because they mm. go together. You mm. understand that, well, she did what she could do with the resources available to mm. her. I know better. How do I love my children better? Mm. Part of the there. powerful stuff you just said there, you know, because it struck a chord with me. You know, growing up, my mother was my, mo my mother wanted to give more, but she didn't have that more to give. I mean, mm. the love she wanted to love me so you much, but see she, I, I knew, but what? she couldn't express it. You know, mm. she didn't know how to express it. But it was from her. Her way of giving is her way of loving is giving you. Make sure you're yeah. okay. You have the best dress, yeah. nice shoes. There's a help with you. There's a you know, yeah. but that's. Communication where you and I sit now with that bond. That. I need that. I so craved for that. Mm. But you know, but I, but as I grew up into an adult, I understood what, what her shortcomings were yeah. and how she, why she couldn't achieve that. But you see, my own experience of unconditional love was, you know, as much as I, I, I share what you guys have also shared. But when, when my mother was sick, and like I wasn't even thinking of anything else. Mm. It was just getting the woman the best care we could find. I didn't even. Like everything else was on standstill. Yeah. Mm. Like I wasn't mm. even. People, were, my, was my brother, my brother was appreciate. Eventually, gave a speech and he appreciated the work I did. 
for me, it was, was, not, was not not work. Work. That's <laughs> an You from simply, child I, yes, to the mother. I, know that. I just, I'm like, so he was so appreciative, and I'm thinking, mm -hmm. how did I do? no question. I, wish, I just know, had to do the mm, job. It also reminds me, you remember the um, accident that I told you I witnessed? Yes. A mother and her two sons, this particular, and everyone said, even though she was the last person in the vehicle, and she had like serious um, wounds. She just kept shouting for her sons, mm. my sons. She did not think about herself. No. She didn't even see herself. She didn't even realize where she, you know, what, what, what she had gone through. Mm. She just kept asking for oh, her sons. And that's what I'm saying. You, you can't explain it. It's like, it's it magical. is me. This is me. Yeah, <laughs> These yeah. are my fingers and my toes. I'm like, you know, it's just yeah, a part of yeah, me. And yeah. I cannot but be those things. Let me just Finally, um, yeah. drop something. Um, Unconditional love should also come to oneself. We must love ourselves unconditionally. And most of the time, we're busy loving everybody, but we don't love ourselves. Oh, exactly. And so while we're extending unconditional love to other people and expecting unconditional love, we should also love ourselves because we're not perfect. We must love ourselves unconditionally and accept our own flaws. That's a fabulous way to end this segment. Thank you so much, Takwe. That's all we can take when we come back. We'll move on to other topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So if you're a football lover, today is your day. So TVC will be broadcasting the very important 2022 World Cup qualifier match um, <laughs> between the Super Eagles of Nigeria and the Black Stars of Ghana. It's going to be 8 p.m. tonight, so watch out for it. You don't have to go on cable. You can watch it right here on TVC. Okay, so those of us that love to eat healthy, Today's topic is for you. And the reason is because a husband is complaining. And it, he actually sent out a, a very interesting post, about a four or five page post, which I'll try to paraphrase. What he's saying that when his wife started this healthy living diet, you know, there are different, there are different names. Let's not put any name forward here. She, yeah, according to him, initially it was cute, you know, eat healthy, make salad this day, you stop carbs, you stop this, you stop that. But after a while, she now got to the point where it's now very impulsive in the sense that every little thing that, every, anything that is sweet that comes to the house, the wife truly really throws it out. So, for example, he gave an example where his friend bought cake for his children. And the woman said, we don't eat cake in this house. And she threw it out. Mm. She doesn't buy sweets for the kids. She doesn't buy chocolate. Like, the, the house is just very dry. Mm. He wants to eat proper Nigerian food. But she complains about the oil, the kind of, the beef that is in there, the calories, or the, or the how much of carbohydrates they're eating. And... He is frustrated. He's shy. He's tired of this. And he's saying, what can he do? Now, this, is, this, this, this comes home to us because <laughs> we're all trying to lose weight. <laughs> and we're all mothers no, 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 here. Me, and we're all trying to have a good, healthy eating habit. That's bad. How do we find a middle ground in this situation? You can call us on 0812 You can also tweet us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag <laughs> your view TVC so we can read the tweets. Have you guys, first of all, before everyone goes to solution, <laughs> have you experienced this where, me, I know I have experienced this. <laughs> I think all of But let me, who, who would like to go first? Okay. 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 So let me tell you, in my house, we don't use um, MSGs. So seasoning we, yeah, seasoning cubes. And I feel like we have adjusted. We have all adjusted. Yes. Everybody eats like that. But then I found my husband's secret stash <laughs> of the liquid seasoning that he hides somewhere. <laughs> When I'm not there, that he puts it his see. food. And I found it, I didn't say anything. I trashed it. And then weeks later, I found another one. <laughs> a bigger <laughs> bottle. <laughs> hey, so it happens. And wow. I have, you know, there used to be a time that I would have described myself like this woman. I was a tyrant. But the man is another. He was like, see, madam, do you? Your life journey is different from mine. I would make my bad choices and live, you know, and live with them. You... Do you? Mm. And as for your children, allow me to buy them some small, small, sweet, sweet things. 
So I try to make, you know, I've, I've you know, we try to balance. But the thing that bothers, especially someone who's trying to be on a healthy um, lifestyle, is that um, you're surrounded by many people not um, on that path. Mm. So what helps is that you want to have a community of people because that's how you support yourself, you support each other, and keeps you on track. When you don't have that support, you're likely to, you know, fall oh, off the wagon time. here and there. But mm. then when it's a whole family that is yeah, involved right. and then you have friends that are involved, it's so much easier. And so I can understand her own mm. is trying to make sure that we're all involved. But I always say that um, remember that you're dealing with other adults. And yeah. then children also have different needs. You don't yeah. have to put them on a strict yeah. diet. Yeah. So does not you know, interestingly, because the lady, according to this article, the lady also said, Kept telling her husband that their test, your test balls will adjust. You know, you, know you don't use your test balls will adjust. You'll be okay. And which is probably what you also thought that your, your family's test balls will adjust. But in my own case, I mean, I, my, my kids don't they like to have stuff. I mean, I used to, I, I like having coming like last just yesterday. Mm. I came back home with marshmallows for them. You know, and I like I give it to them to share. But my husband will be complaining. Why would you give? You know, because I just he's he's a healthy buff. He likes to. Things to be healthy around the house. He eats it all because he knows the exercises, but he doesn't want everyone to have to eat it. So you give my child, child chocolate, the dad will take it for me because you're not exercising. Me, I'm exercising, I can't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, stop like that. How are you doing? Really? That's bullying. That's bullying. <laughs> you know, but bullying. Have you experienced this? Have I experienced this? That's a question. <laughs> <laughs> my sister, the first time I decided to become a vegetarian, <laughs> my darling, I had a problem because. Um, the way we cook in my house, you know, I'm from a part of Nigeria where the soup, you won't see space in the soup. Everything is fighting for attention, yes. Mm -hmm. And we do with all manner of stockfish, different things. Yeah. And I found it difficult to cook without all of those. It was a struggle. I was only able to survive for like, so I would do my separate meal and then do for the house without tasting because I'm not mm. supposed to taste it. Mm. It was a battle. And I survived that vegetarian waka for like just three months. <laughs> and I packed up. Then my husband was beer, you know, he was just, he would be eating alone. He's not used to eating alone. Mm. He likes to eat together. I started again when I felt I had a housekeeper who could cook. So I'll give her the menu for the house, do the meat, snails, stockfish and everything for everybody. Then do mine. And then okay. I had another problem. You are dividing us in this house. <laughs> we have decided that we must eat together as one. Every time, we must eat together. And then I say, but we're eating something different. You say, bring it, bring it. You now mix my own and his own. And then he's <laughs> using his uh, swallow to touch this. <laughs> this will not work in this house. <laughs> then, another problem I had was, even when he lets me eat my food mm. separately, when he's eating his, he's used to feeding me. He will now bring meat. Uh, baby, I said I'm a vegetarian. He said, so you, because you're a vegetarian, you will not collect meat from your husband. It becomes an issue. Mm. So after a while, I just said, God, I don't know what you're teaching me. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, if it is vegetarianism, I have to rest it. Mm. I don't know when I'm going to mm. pick it up again. Mm. So it's been a battle trying to get all your family members to adjust. They actually need it because everybody, almost yeah. all of them are quite overweight, right. like big for yeah. their age and everything. And even him, he struggles mm. with his mm. weight because yeah. he's really big. Yeah. Not, he, does, he doesn't look big, yeah. but let yeah. him stand on the scale. Yeah. You know his numbers, yeah. yes. But you see, the lady here was saying that oh, her own mother had health issues. Mm. So she was trying to prevent her family from that same experience. And that's why she's trying to inculcate this new healthy. But you the problem is that must we force children into this? Okay, so let, let me, let me um, put it this way. Um, I think that what she probably is going through is um, trauma and fear, and she's projecting that fear and living in that fear that she doesn't want this thing to happen. Because um, my, my aunt, I grew up knowing my aunt never putting salt in her food. Wow. And that's because she just feels everybody in her family usually has high blood pressure mm. and diabetes and she doesn't want it. So she confirmed, confirmed everyone within her house not to eat food with oh. salt. It was so hard, like it wasn't comfortable, yeah. but that she was able to do that. Um, in my own experience, I have um, tried this um, in and out of diet. And my husband really isn't bothered about my um, diet because he will sort himself and eat. But then it would bring a bone mm. of Ice cream. Of food, whatever food, at around like 10 p.m. And then he wants to show me love <laughs> by feeding me yeah. at 10 p.m. And 
it, it was it, it was happening a lot consistently. So he started feeling like, huh? why would why would he want to eat with me and then I would not want to eat? Mm, why, you don't like, love him anymore. You don't, that, this is he doesn't understand that if one day food will not destroy. Oh, that what they always say. Yeah. <laughs> so I I had to and then. The other thing that happened was because I was dieting, I wasn't cooking as much. So BC even tried. BC was even making their um, own for them. Their own for them. I was cooking less. My 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 meals reduced. My variant of meals changed, and so it was like, so we don't eat in this house anymore because we are now <laughs> dieting. Dieting. So that that was the drama in my house, and I just realized that um, as. As couples, we need to make sacrifices for one another, yeah. you know. One, so who should be sacrificing here? I don't know again. Is it you that are dieting? Person, you must explain the journey and well, let them buy it. You know. yeah. If they don't buy it, you cannot force it on them. So they buy it for a time yeah. and they relapse. Mm. Yeah, let me come yeah. to Dr. Moyo, then I come to Miriam. Mm. Dr. Moyo, are you there? Thanks for calling. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good yes, sir. So. Yes, I was, uh, I was just laughing when I was listening to your individual <laughs> stories that I could relate to all of them. I am not married though, but I have a friend that is a foodie. She's a caterer, she's a foodie. <laughs> and her kind of food is always very attractive. When I was even deciding that I want to do fit time, I want to be slim, I want to lose weight, that's when she was a couple of people attractive from office. I, I just did it, I'll try it, now. try She tried to encourage me. I love her, but this food, I, it's not good for me. I'm trying to watch my weight. She was like, hey, this one, this one thing will not kill you. Now, tomorrow she will bring cake. Another time she will bring another type of uh, fancy food. <laughs> and when I saw that this thing is not helping me, I started shifting from her. Not because I miss her, but I, I want to, I, I need my own, uh, I need to control my weight and all of that. But when she noticed that, she started getting offended. So I, I tried explaining to her, but I, I, the solution I made, I, I decided was that right. this thing is, I love you, but it's not good for your health. Nice. Thank you, Dr. Muyo. Yes, so. Let me come to Mara, because you said that in your own case, your husband was hiding <laughs> yes, the seasoning. Yes. But you see, that's your husband <laughs> trying to hide it. But some people will say, I don't some people will spark for you yeah. that we're not doing it again in this house. Please, put seasoning cube in my food. <laughs> but you still have somebody that is at least mm -hmm. hiding. So what would, you, what would you, how would we solve this problem? So you, um, Obiadule has a good um, um, solution. solution, which is maybe have different meals. And then you hope that the person understands and understands the journey that you're on. And, you know, with Moya, she also said that she was able to leave. You know, she, she tried to distance herself from her friend. You can distance yourself from your friend. You can distance yourself from your husband or your wife. And um, so what I try to do personally in the house is some of the meals are enjoyed by everyone. You see my salads. Ima makes the salads for us in the house. Yeah. She loves it. Every time she will call, Mommy, please don't forget avocado. And she makes it so well. And we love that particular salad yeah. because it has the vegetables and then it has chicken and yeah. fish and whatever. Yeah. Everyone eats that. Everyone loves pepper soup. Everyone loves the catfish so pepper soup. The so there are meals that we can eat together. together. And then they know that there are some meals that they're like, what's that you're eating? <laughs> and then they can eat their yeah. own. So it's not that you must force everyone. My husband works out you know how you know he works out like every day yeah. so he can even afford to make some bad choices and he does that and when he does it he he will tell you i'm going to work it out with the children though i have become a lot more relaxed i used to be a lot more strict to the point that when my children go out and they get a bottle of soft drink you will see their eyes you'll be looking like, <laughs> my god i cannot believe this is happening to us <laughs> we get to eat sugar and it used to bother me like why are you people drinking like drink. so <laughs> now I allow them to eat. Before when you bring chocolate sweets mm -hmm. to my house, we will spend the whole year eating the chocolate because you eat it once a week. They also know now there's some noodle, whatever, in my house is once a month. Yeah. And if you eat it more than once a month, you know that you're not eating yeah. it until the third month or the next two months. Wow. You know. But I'm a bit more relaxed. And You're a tyrant. Now that, and now that I'm relaxed, I see yes. my children, they're looking a bit chubby. Oh, they look like, you know, know. <laughs> my son has some bum bum. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, baby, it's good for you. you know, yeah. I, I, so, so, let me take Kelechi. Good morning, Kelechi. Are you there? Morning, good morning. Good morning, you alive. Okay, um, please, uh, uh, will you, will you please, is it possible to take you back a little bit? Is Absolutely. It it's your view. Okay. Let it count. Go ahead. Okay. This is about the topic you discussed yesterday. Okay. It was a topic after my heart, but oh. you mixed it up. 
Okay. And I, I was not comfortable with it. Okay. That thing that happened on that video. Oh, oh, I really wanted to hear that. Please, could you find out? Which one? Which one of the topics? Can I even remember this? And I'd love to hear. Please, if you try, can try yeah, calling him back. It would be nice to hear. Yeah. I'm not sure which yeah. it was. Please, and if okay. you're online, you can send a message. We'll yeah, send a message on, on, on Instagram or whatever. You know, I remember this um, Desperate Housewives. Mm. One of them, Brie, who always <laughs> ensured... See, she don't throw away her face. <laughs> who always <laughs> ensured that everybody must eat accordingly. You must sit well. For the meals must be proper. And the kids were always tired and... <laughs> can we have jo can we just have pizza? Can we just have burger? No can we just you know, so I, I, I realized very early that these kids will get to a time where I can't make all the choices for them. I can only point them. See, even the adult self, is he allowing me to make <laughs> a healthy choice? Me, I yeah. know what he needs that work for him. Me, I work out. He's not a workout person. Yeah. So I can afford to eat anything. I, I know how yeah. to get it done. This morning, I had done like 200 squats before yeah. coming here yeah. today. So I know how to, because my father is a sportsman. I grew up doing all of those. Yeah. Yeah. So it's easier for me yeah. to just get into routine. But it's not for him. And I know what he needs to. But he just feels... Now that I'm making small, small money, <laughs> let me at least enjoy it now. Yeah. 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 See me. You know, Before, when we're starting, we're okay, we can't afford this, we can't afford... Now I can afford, you're still telling me yeah. that I cannot, I cannot eat, eat something. It. You know, interestingly, you know, I, I, my own mentality is, if I deny my kids too much, mm. when they get older, they will crave it so much, because it happened to me. Mm. I, I think I told you guys when they beat me up almost to stupor when I went to go and take biscuits. biscuits Remember my, yeah, my, my dad's yeah. experience? And for that, for many years, I didn't eat biscuits because I was beaten up for eating biscuits. So for many years, when I not travel to the US and I just eat cookies everywhere, ah, oh my you God. You yourself. I, I was over. <laughs> now I'm a cookie addict. I love cookies. Chocolate chip cookies, mm. pecan cookies, macadamia cookies, everything. Chocolate. 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 Oh, well, so well. <laughs> everything. So for me, I just actually let them know what these things are. Yeah. And then make sure, let them know that, okay, you can just not have so a healthy. little in moderation. Because if you have too much of it, you, 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 you gain too much weight. Mm. But is that how to moderate with your spouse? Hmm. You want to eat healthy. Adults. You want to be, you want to so, look like a, so a supermodel for you. But at the same time, the husband doesn't want to do the work. Hmm. So el healthy food must taste good. I I'm not a believer in healthy meals that you are starving okay. yourself and it doesn't yeah. taste good because what you do is build an unsustainable diet. Yeah. You can't sustain it because it doesn't taste nice. Let me talk. Let me pause you for a second. I'm sorry. Abdullah is holding. Abdullah, are you there? I'm, uh, yes. I'm You're alive. Go ahead, please. Good morning, uh, morning, my beautiful uh, ladies. Good morning, sir. Hello? Yes, we Good can morning. hear you very clearly. Go ahead, please. Uh, what I want to contribute is that <laughs> the most difficult things uh, for yes. any human being to experience to change their diet, mm. very difficult. Mm. True. You know, for example, I like when I was uh, developing, uh, maybe when my sugar level was high, what I did, I went to the hospital to go and see a doctor. Uh, my doctor, no, he was like, he wanted to see my wife. Uh, because of a sugar level, why will you see my wife? He said, no, he just want to advise him, advise her on one or two diets that are supposed to be taken. Uh, advise her on what? He said, okay, there's no problem. The next day, I took my wife to the hospital. You know, he started explaining, don't add sugar, don't eat meat, don't uh, even meat, no matter... The kind of health that I have with this one, I can never stop eating meat. Ah. <laughs> That's no matter. It's I true now. Meat, if you give me food without meat, most of all, most of all, any food I swallow from my childhood, I will never eat, no matter how hungry am I. I will never eat. That's what is still in build on me at this age. <laughs> That's what happened. You know, it's it's okay. When you say, okay, I have your other things, because me, I know what I would, I, what I would do. No. Okay, exactly. Thank, thank you, Abdul. Thank you. Let me go on a break. When I come back, I'll come to you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we still have Edda on the line. Good morning, Edda. Are you there? Yeah, good morning. Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. 
Sorry, we can't hear you, Ada. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. Okay. Um, some years back, my husband was um, diagnosed with diabetes. Mm -hmm. That was during the COVID period. I was home and I was. we don't stay together. I stay in Abuja and he stays in Benin. Mm -hmm. So they called me that I should come home. When I got home, and it had to do with his food and all that. You know, we don't stay together. So normally the nannies are with the children and him and they do very cooking. They gave us the menu to follow. So after he was discharged, they stuck with those uh, menu that was given to them. And I want to thank God that he has, you know, he's doing better and he's doing well. Mm. So what we eat in our home really, really, really matters. Uh, most times when I get home, I just go find out that it is more interesting to eat than the normal. Because you see them, they have their portions, you know, there's vegetables, there's compared to the regular food that we just... But either do your kids get frustrated that they can't eat... The sweets and the party packs, no, 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 stuff no, like no. that. They, they're even good, even good with the diabetic menu. Mm. They're, even, they're even okay with the diabetic menu because for me, I even better and even richer than what we take normally. Yes. You know, they, they have like portions. Maybe the portion of rice might be smaller, lots of vegetables, you know, veggie and fruits and all that. So I think the kids are really fine with okay. that menu. Because most times, if you prepare, they'll say, no, they want to eat that food. Fantastic. So Thank you very much, Edda, for sharing your story. That's an interesting, yes. I was saying before um, the caller came in, before the break, that um, he healthy food should taste good. And that's what our last caller just said. So healthy food must taste good. And I, I think in our bid for diet, we shouldn't do fat diets. Because usually where the issues come in is where you do that, um, I want to lose 10 kg in one week, kind of. <laughs> so you are now on watermelon diet for one week. Oh, I'm doing only eggs for one week. That's usually where the problem comes in, where everybody around you is wondering, are you okay? It's oh, this, you cannot, you can't sustain this. So I think that we almost, as women or as men, whoever is going through, we must learn to um, make lifestyle choices that you can, that can be sustainable for a long time. It's food that you would enjoy eating. Meal is for But sometimes, so, but these but, things are, you, you need time. You need to be there to make it yourself yes. because these are things that you can't be going to work doing a nine to five and then come back home and start thinking, how would I combine it? So sometimes was, the, 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 the junk food is the easiest. Yes, thing to I pick want to up. just throw something I'm... in, please, because there are people that, like the last, the color, one color, the man that said, I can never stop eating meat. Many times um, we see men that are sort of like stuck in their ways and say, I'm not, I cannot stop it, even in the face of impending death. Like they've given you yellow card. You say, no, I'm going to eat the, I'm going to wake up and drink. Every day and I die. And so it's, it's important choice. that we, we must be open to living a good quality life and making the sacrifices that will help us enjoy long term. Yeah. So now the answer to that is that um, we need to understand that you can't control another adult human being. Mm. And you may watch your husband or your wife doing something and you know in your heart that this is wrong and this may lead to, you know, something serious. But the most you can do is advise that adult. Yeah. Your children, on the other hand, you can help. And I just want to go back to the part where you say some people are so busy. Like me now, I truly feel bad because I have so much more on my plate these days. I don't feel like I'm the best mother, you know, anymore. Like I used to really do well. When my children would get um, sweets and stuff from school, we would s separate it like for the week, put them in Ziploc bags. And you know what you're meant to take for this week and the next week. You know, and they understood it, portion sizes, how many of those you could take. And it was because I had that time to do that. But now, I'm not there as much. And so sometimes I'll give them the easiest, quickest thing mm, to eat. Or yeah. if they come again, I ask, Mom, can we don't have that chocolate? And I just need yeah. to, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes, Go we ahead. can. But for anyone who can do it, I think, you know, we're saying that, when you tell the children, when you put the children on this regimen, oh, you make them so um, crave for more. Sometimes mm. you're teaching them how to eat healthy. Many times, I, I, I will never forget this lady. She had, you know, she was really overweight. And she said it's because she was not taught how to eat healthy. She was just taught, put food in front of me and, and I'll eat it. it. We don't have that culture where we teach children that there has to be portions, time to eat, the sort of food to eat at the time that you need to eat it, you know, different, different things, and in moderation. And when you're eating moderation today, you would not have the issues mm. in the future where mm. you have to be fighting mm. to One lose weight or, or yeah. you know, yeah. So, so I don't know the moderation good. really yes, is. Moderation yeah. is key, yeah. especially yeah. for children. Start them on moderate meals. I think and I have a caller, free from Abuja. Options. Good morning, are you there? 
Hello, good morning. Good morning, you're live. Go ahead, please. Finally, I want you to get to today. This is my first time. Of course. Welcome to the show. Your name is Free? Unfortunately, yeah, Free. F R W E. Okay. Ah, nice. Nice. Unfortunately, yeah, I don't have a contribution to make. I just called to compliment all of you. You look oh. So tell us about your name, Free. What's, what's that about? <laughs> That's the name I was given. For real? Oh, okay. What part of the country? Why? What part of the country? Lagos. I live in Lagos. No, I think what part of, where are you from? Where, where, what part of? Oh, I'm from Ebony State. Ebony State. Oh, free. And she's in Nigeria. Of course uh, she's in Nigeria. We're trying to understand the, the, the understanding of free. Okay. Free, what's your I'm surname? Sure may, I ask your, may I ask your surname? Samuel. So free Samuel. Oh, oh my wow. God. <laughs> I love it. Free day, Samuel. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling free Samuel. Okay, nice. Okay. So uh, I wanted to say that um, I like the idea of portion control, and that's what you know most people try to adjust how they eat and go. So for those of us who eat in tiny bits, it's easier to have portion control because you know that mm, when I take it, I'll just wait till I'm hungry again to eat. But you see those people who finish a pot of spaghetti at a city, <laughs> it's very difficult to portion yeah, control yeah. them. Um, you know, I came from a house where we could boil two derica of rice and we eat it all day. It will remain till the next day. Yeah. But when I went to this family, uh, uh, they can finish at a sitting. The sizes of food, I'm like, how do you do it like this? So it's still a problem today on portion control. Yeah. Even when I dish the food, this is okay for you, honey. Like... I know belle fool. <laughs> you see what's happening here, you know? Yeah. But what I did, because um, my children now took that side where they really eat. My children would eat good food, swallow soup. They know the names of every soup. Every soup. Every soup. Oh. They eat well. Then they will not add snacks. You know, there are kids that don't like food that much, but they eat snacks. These yeah. ones, they eat the two oh. and they eat it well. well oh. And I had an issue with my son getting very big, especially yeah. when they came back from their trip. So what I did now was to inculcate exercises. Mm. So I try, I tell my housekeeper, no second helping for him, especially mm. him. No second helping. Once he finishes his food, That's he should it. drink water. Yeah. He should drop his plate. Okay, and then this. we do exercise. So yeah. I now started looking for exercises that he can do. Right. Swimming. Basketball is one. Basketball yeah. and all of that. Yeah. He's a, he's Let me take this call from Kelechi. He's been holding for a while. Kelechi, are you there? Yes, Morayo. Yes, you're live. Uh, please, I'm going to speak PG. Oh, go ahead. It's your view, uh, so sir. That, so that those of us who are not as enlightened as you women oh. would digest my perspectives. Okay, sir. Wow. Right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. See, yesterday's topic was a topic that is so dear to me, but like I said, you missed it up. Okay. The one, that thing that happened in the video is different from the issue you discussed that a pastor insists that a, a woman that couples that are getting married should be brought to them for his approval. Okay. Moriah, see, let me tell you something. Eh? I, let me talk as an Igbo man. Igbo culture says that under no circumstance will a man kneel down before his wife. It's okay. not done. Because okay. you're undermining your position as the man, as the head of the family. That's okay. number, that is what the culture stipulates. Okay. okay. But because of Western influence, ever since Christianity has introduced into Igbo land, Mm. Christianity has succeeded in relegating evil culture to the background. So mm. we have stuck to Western culture. That's why you see women, that's why I see our women, I see our men going to kneel down to propose to their what it is not done. Mm. Like one of the your ladies said, if that thing had happened in the western part of the in the western part, maybe he would have gotten some approval. Mm. Okay? But that aside, Moral you see, the a woman I want a woman I want I want marry. Do you understand? The pastor insisted that courtship after six months should be, should be terminated. That is the, what the pastor said. And the, do you know something? Everybody in that church is afraid of this, afraid of this pastor. Even the parents of this girl. It's so annoying, I'm, I'm telling you. Mm. I met this girl in 2017. After six months, this girl started telling me that he's going away. Because the pastor is... The, because I, I was not ready after six months. Do you know that this girl said that this, this girl was threatening the relationship with what the pastor said, in, uh, what the pastor said yeah. about this uh, courtship yeah. in the book he published, that after six months, it is going to be over. She gave me that book to read. I said, is that okay? After reading, I said, is this why this girl is behaving this way? Mm -hmm. Do you know one of these days I visited this girl on the road, though, on the road? I wanted to give, I said, I tell her, give me a good, a goodbye, a goodbye, a goodbye home. Do you know what she said? 
that she cannot do that because the pastor may be crossing. <laughs> and when she sees her, she will say, who is this person? And when she said, and uh, if she says the pastor that uh, is a woman, a man that wants to get married to me, and she, which she, the pastor will be angry, say, why haven't you brought, why, why haven't you uh, brought it, uh, brought him to me? Mm -hmm. You understand? I was so surprised. I kept quiet. I no talk. I no talk. I no talk. So this thing kept going. You understand? So, you see, you see, so, so many things have happened. Mm. The parents are, the, 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 father, the father is there. The parents, Thank you. Are, the, the mother goes to the church. Thank you very much, Kelichi. Mm. Interesting angle. Different yeah. perspective. Different. different perspective. Thank you very much very for that. Different. For that. Um, That's why we, yesterday, you know, we're talking about maturity. Yeah. You need to be mature be enough first. You know, before you go into this thing, so that you can make some decisions yourself. for yourself. yourself. Yeah. And then emotional, you can emotional, emotional intelligence. Ah, oh, as in that's just even for the meal discussion, mm -hmm. for dieting discussion. Sometimes you will pipe down. Yes. Just because you you sense that things are getting heated in your marriage. Yes. But because intention, I understand. But intention is win. noble I from the pastor's side. Saying yes. that, listen, yes. Yes. keep after six months because yes. no. after six months. They, they don't don't, Lord don't waste the time. Yeah, you become Lord of the Rings. Six yes. But six years, seven years, eight years. So yeah. if a man does not have an intention or is not ready, why do you want to hook Achille. up with this woman and keep her till you're ready? You know, mm. so there are some people that can't get away with it as a young person. You're just finishing school. Good, that's what I'm doing. You have time to find yourself, get mm -hmm. a job and all that. You can get away with it. But a woman who is dating from 35... You now, after six months, you're not saying anything. So why are we there? Because so what the happens is when they are there, you know, Christianity says do not defile oh, the bed so, before yeah. you start. After six months, seven months, eight months, what do you think they are doing? Singing praise and worship when they visit. No, things happen. So okay. the pastor is trying to save everybody's head. When right. ready, Let's, let come. me take this call from Toby. <laughs> Good morning, Toby. Are you there? Hi, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. You see, you're, you're, you're cracking my head this morning with this year's tire. Oh, hey. oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Right, okay, so let me, I just wanted to crack you guys up a little. So on this food issue we're talking about, this yes. diet issue. Mm -hmm. So I have an in-law, a brother-in-law, whose wife went from being normal like me, like I like my chicken, meat and everything, moved on to, I'm a vegetarian, and then moved on to being vegan. Now, the whole family is vegan. Wow. You know, so there was a time uh, my mother-in-law, visited them and you know i didn't know at that time that they were vegan so i went there to see her later you know with the hope of asking her to come over to my place so we went there you know i didn't even take water because i'd eaten before i left so you know they offered me everything and i said no but on getting to our own house with my mom oh man oh, I got nice can you hear me yes yeah, yeah. so we can hear you go ahead Mo mommy mommy goes mommy goes ah See, the hunger will don't kill me for the ah. past three days. I beg, give me better food. <laughs> you understand? Because they are subjected to the vegan world. <laughs> and do you know what? My brother in England himself, he call, you know what? When they are house, they are vegan. When he comes to my house, he will say, to you, they are chicken. They oh. are something. They are. You will eat everything. You will clean his mouth, rinse his mouth. Use mouthwash <laughs> and go back home and go and con continue to get. <laughs> I hope they will not know that. They will, they will watch this show. Yeah, do it your vegan now. and whatever you want to do. But don't subject the entire family. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Let people do what they want to do. Mm. You know, that's my contribution. This Fantastic, year. Toby. That's interesting, but it's a learning curve for Marion because mm -hmm. our husband is already stealing and we hide deep <laughs> seasoning. <laughs> but I just come to business house, well, please give me food that has food that has seasoning. Please, please put it inside. Like. So we should uh, try to carry everybody along and show them. Yeah. Don't, 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 they might actually be doing it behind your back. Yeah, yeah I think so it's more force open. It on anyone. Uh, it should be more open. So probably this woman that is here hasn't been open. So the man is trying free. to keep the yes. family. Just like this, just like our, right just like our article, this man really wanted to be supportive. He said, yeah. when, when he started, I, I, it was cute, it was nice, we all agreed, we all, you know, we after a while, a after a you while. Know that just dropped. Sorry, you wanted to go? Okay. Something that just dropped here. You know, sometimes we think um, this is the right way. Mm. And because you are the woman of the house, mm. let everybody just adjust. Yes. This is how it's going to be from now on. Mm. And the man understands that for there to be peace, mm. he has to just play along. Mm. So from time to time, let's ask our family members questions. Is there anything I'm doing mm. that you don't like? 
we may hear the truth and be ready for the truth. Because Hi. it could come out. You, you could be there for years in your mind. Uh, everybody complies in my house. This is how we are going. And but when they go out, they are looking at you. When you are they, out, they, they do what they need to do. So I, I don't want to house, raise, like, yeah. you know, have family members around. You know, me I banned. I can't tell. I, I, ba I banned cola in my house. Like, mm -hmm. like kids, you're not allowed because it makes you hyper. My kids are already naturally hyper. So it's never allowed. Oh, yes. So at parties, I'm always monitoring and watching them. You, you can take any other thing but cola. So they got so used to not taking cola. But of course, grandma will come. Grandma, oh. grandma loves cola. cola. Mm -hmm. Cold one as that. As 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 so she'll give it to them. They'll say, mommy, no, mommy doesn't allow us to take it. Mm -hmm. But after a while, I started feeling bad because they really wanted to taste this thing because mm. their friends are drinking. They really wanted So I had to succumb to that. I said, okay, when you're you you 10 years old, only, only Elizabeth is allowed to drink it. The others are not. So they're mm. with when they're 10 years old. <laughs> and they would drink cola. But now she drinks. And she looks like an adult. Like, oh, yeah, I can, I can drink cola. You guys are not. You know? So I tried to make that yeah, compromise. Like that. And even for my children, there's some things they'll say, no, we're not allowed. Aima, my daughter, is likely to go outside and keep to the plan. My son is like, woof, we're out. Let's do this. <laughs> okay. I like it. Like different people, you just understand that they're different personalities. Yeah. But I think it's important that um, we, we have the healthy habit. We have it as a foundation. And I know I know. So let's that talk about healthy habits. What is yeah. healthy habits? And I notice that people who live that way, children who are raised that way, even when they go out and have that craving yeah. and everything, they still go back to what they are used to and what is healthy. Nobody sees a healthy person yeah. living a healthy lifestyle and thinks that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. But they want to do it, but they want it to be so in I a way that's sustainable. Yeah, let's, I'd like to... Down, it's sustainable. So healthy living, we're just talking... Okay, you now you have a call. Let me come down. I'll come back to you. Bright, are you there? Hi, guys. Good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you guys doing? Very well. Go ahead, please. Uh, my name is Bright. I'm calling you. Yes. I think... Um, I think we all need to check our background uh, where we are And um, sometimes, like one of you said, that uh, some people from where they come from, they are not and um, they can't imagine getting to a place where getting married to a wife who doesn't understand that she's big. Uh, for somebody like me, I grew up in a place like that. But then, as I was getting older, even in my house, um, the level of the food I eat, I tell my wife how small I want it to be. Um, there's a second place we eat when we go out to eat in town. We tell their food, small portion. And even colleagues of mine, everybody in my office complain. I take just a little bit. Oh, did you get what yeah, I think you were talking about food portions that you mentioned. Some people have different ways of eating. And, um, mm. But we didn't hear the rest. It was very yeah, So we're talking about healthy, healthy. habits. So it's just... It's, first of all, with children, I always say don't put your children on a very strict diet if they are not already working out and just eating healthy options. Fruits and vegetables are good for your children. When it's time to eat, they should have meal times. You can't keep eating throughout the day. You know, you must have a time when you sit down and you eat. I know there are some people that say, oh, that's how they eat little by little, but children should have times that we have meal times. This is when we sit down and we have our meal. We have breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then you can have sweets and chocolates in moderation. So it's, um, and I know that there used to be a time where parents used to do this. Okay, when you finish your food, that's the healthy, nutrient, dense food that you need to grow and develop, then you can have some ice cream. Then you can have, you know, and so the children put that, and before you know, you have a child that understands that there are meal times and then there are um, healthy options to eat. Then exercise. A lot of us right now, especially in Lagos, I noticed because of traffic, I guess, and things like that. We're at home, we're in front of the TV, our children are playing games, they're not exercising. So different ways to get your children exercising. For us growing up, we'll just play outside. Mm -hmm. You have belly, belly, you yes, and just do get, get, you know, anything. And that was exercise. So you don't have to make exercise like, this is the time for workout. You can say, let's, Let's run in the let's compound. Walk, you guys, yeah. let's take a walk let's and let's go and yeah. gist. You know, things like no, that. No, I just noticed. I just, I just, something just dropped in my right now. My, my help is one that dishes the, my, my kids' food. And you know, when, 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 you, when she cooks sometimes, for that feeling of, okay, I cook that, my people are eating. So she gives them huge portions, heaps and heaps. Okay, can, can, can you finish it? Ah, they'll finish it though. They'll finish it. I'm like, ah, this is too much for a child. Mm -hmm. So I think what I'm getting from you is that I also have to pay attention to the portion. Don't let my kids get used to this big, big bar. 
it gives them this huge ebba. And I see this, and I think, ah, he can't even go, oh, my jet on, my jet on. <laughs> you know, you guys got it. I, I, I wanted to just um, touch in on the healthy living. My kids are not even really, really eating, eating. Enough eating, foodies. Enough foodies. So I, I have to compel them and cajole them into eating. However, I think that we should explain to them why we're telling them not to eat what they are not eating. Because many times, many parents just give children instructions thinking, don't eat it, we don't eat it. But if we, if we take the time and it's painstaking, because many parents are busy to help the child to understand why you are not having any more cake today. You've had enough, your stomach would pain you, you might end up vomiting, or you'll be uncomfortable, so no more. You know, so like they understand, okay, we've taken a portion. Mommy can only give us one portion. So what do we choose? So I, I make them choose. Do you want drink or cake? You choose one. Mm. The, the, where, do you want um, biscuit or this one? You choose one. So yeah. at every point in time, yes. you know that I am the one making the, the choice choices. of what I want to make mm -hmm. and all Let of that. Let me take this call from Jigawa State. Good morning, Buba. Hello, are you there, Buba? Hello, Buba. Good morning. Good morning. You're, there, you're live. Go ahead, please. Okay, uh, good morning, lady. Um, I want Uber. to look at this topic from another angle. Yes. Um, from this angle of childbirth, choosing specific, uh, specific food to eat. I'll give an example uh, with my dad. Right from childbirth, he, he, he has been eating only yam and beef. That has been his meal from childbirth. He's close to 90 now. And that is his only need. When my mom got married to him newly, she tried to spice his food, you know, change his diet. But she could not do that. In fact, she, she said to, to a point that he was even for missing while trying to change his meal. That the mom has to tell her if she does not want to accept him the way he is, she should just pack and go. So she has to, she has to make that sacrifice of allowing him eat the kind of food he grew up with, and that has been young and this. So let's look at this, this yeah, from please. this angle of, you know, something is he that healthy? came up with from childbirth and nice. stick to that particular <laughs> diet of food without changing his meal. And I tell you, he is as healthy as, as he is, very healthy. My dad can work in the farm. He's close to 90 years now. Hmm. He can work in the farm from morning till night. And his diet has not been seen and young. From anyhow, just beans and yeah, you eat your rice, you eat your um, good Thank food. you. But Thank you, Uba. Thank you very much. So, so I, we're bringing down this conversation now because we're wrapping it up. Um, because the, 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 the conversation started from a man complaining yes. that his wife has told the entire family and now he's frustrated because his children now are not allowed to have that liberty to eat what they want to eat. So what advice, therefore, let's, let's, let's begin to wrap up the conversation. What should he do? Because he also accepts that, yes, healthy eating is nice, yeah. but I also want to eat normal what food. So that's what you started telling us. Yeah. What is normal food? Yeah. Is Eba still okay? Yeah. Is um, a yeah. mother uh, yeah. the other day? I, I just natural foods. Are those, yeah. are those no things? So, yes. so, let me so, add... Um, that um, we have different body types. And you know, when we talk about food, we don't pay attention to those body types. Yeah. There are certain uh, body types that are suitable for plant-based meals. Nuts, you know, legumes and all that. It works with your blood. It just goes. You don't have gut problems. You don't have pudging problems. And when you deviate from that body type, no, so these are for adults now, you see that you begin to have stomach issues. Uh, these people that eat, like the ones that eat too much in the house and, you know, they always have stomach issues. They're always running to the toilet. They always, and every time I try to eat like them, I have those issues. It even happens to me on set and my stomach. So I, you have to find what works. Your, our guts speak to us, mm. but we don't pay attention. We don't listen. Our body talks to us. Mm. So pay attention to your body and understand what works for you. When any, you put any meal into your body, and your body is reacting a certain way, and you do it again, and your body is reacting a certain way, you should know this is not for me, and you cut it out. I wanted to add that there are some children, for children now, that they don't eat. They are naturally uh, not wired to eat at that certain age, and I was one of those kids. So parents now try to compensate with some of these snacks, just put something in your stomach, because the child is not hungry. It's not as if the child is fainting. The child is not hungry. And I know that when your son comes to visit, I have to force him to eat. Because he can be in the room all day and I'm not hungry. Uh, come downstairs, I'm not hungry. Come, my friend, come downstairs and come and eat, <laughs> you know. So you, for those sort of children, mm. that's not the time to be putting strict regimen right. and strict diets for them. Right. Mm. Give them something to keep their feel running 
so that they can eat. And when it gets to the age where they are now eating, you can begin to balance that. So I think okay. the point here is do what works for you okay. and your family. Yeah, right. And just in response to what can you do as a family when you find yourself in this situation, let's do a timetable. Let's do a meal plan. Okay, this is what I think we should eat. We can all eat together. But this is what I need to eat specifically because of my own specific health needs. Exactly. Not everyone has the same health needs exactly. per time. Yeah, we do. If you're trying to lose weight, I'm not trying to lose weight because I'm good, you yeah. know. So um, sometimes we apply healthy options and healthy diets to... The wrong people? To the wrong... Um, to the wrong... Uh, so, so we apply it when you have an issue. So that's what people need to understand. When you sometimes you go on these strict diets, it's because you're trying to solve something. Yeah. But when you're just trying to maintain a healthy, regular lifestyle, then you can sit down and say, can we have a family menu? Yeah. And when you include everyone, they also they help should, you. Yeah. I have times when I want to eat something, my children are like, Mommy, how come you're <laughs> eating that? You know, and they remind you, Mom, remember you said you were going to do this because even for them, we listen to yeah. them and do, yeah. we don't make it about yeah. you must Fantastic. do as I say. We have to wrap up. Final talk? F um, final word is um, as much, what is healthy is, not, I feel, is natural. As much as possible, stick with what is natural, um, reduce what is processed, and everybody would feel a bit, and then let it be tasty. You know, mm. if you're going to yes, spice it, it up, yes, it, it needs to taste good. It needs to be as natural as possible, and you must listen to people. If they are squeezing face when they are eating the food, check. <laughs> Don't the give food them cooked. again. Yes. Okay, that's all we can take on the show. It's a nice feel-good Friday type yeah. of topic. Oh. No, I think lots of people connected with the story. Um, so don't forget you can watch the 8 p.m. match. Um, the Nigerian Super Eagles against the Black Stars of Ghana. They'll be playing on TVC 8 p.m. tonight. Don't miss that match. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye for now.